Hello everyone, this is Dr. Samurai. Welcome back to my minute lecture. I am a professor in Japan specializing in the international social pathology. And the topic of my today's minute lecture is Night Stalker, Mr. Richard Ramirez. As usual, in the first half, I would like to uh, give you general information on him. Then, in the latter half, I would like to uh, disclose only what I only know about him. Okay, so let's start. As you know, Mr. Richard Ramirez, he was called Night Stalker because he was kind of a, how do you put it? He specialized in sneaking into unknown house, unlocked windows, unlocked doors, unlocked, and uh, by using guns, knives, and uh, machete, bar, all kinds of things, he did whatever he wanted to do as he pleased. He did uh, so many crazy things and must have had some kind of uncontrollable anger inside already. So whenever he finds house he sneaked into the house and exploded that anger at the people that he found there anyway okay let me tell you some of what he did he used his car and the freeways and he used the freeways so often to go whatever he want to go okay it was like his vein or artery to go to where he wanted to go and he got off at wherever he wanted to get off and he did his business he was like a ninja okay like I said his target was unlocked window and unlocked doors so now those things are very important okay he was called night stalker because of the secretive silent way that he sneaked close to the target night stalker that was the he was the very beginning of the word stalker started to be used I believe and uh, now even in Japan we use word stalker mm -hmm. of course in, all, in a different uh, uh, context but uh, one time he uh, stabbed 79 year old lady so many innumerable times he stabbed her and her neck was almost off you know 79 years old lady another time he sneaked into uh, the house of 64 year old husband and 44 year old wife he killed both of them by stabbing so many times which was his basic mo modus operandi and uh, he tried to take that uh, wife's heart out of the body but because of the ribs he could not do it so instead of her heart he is said to uh, removed both of her eyes you know took them off then he dismembered the body 
there was a house of 83 year old sister and 80 year old handicapped sister right he stalked into the house and uh, bludgeons them with the sledgehammer he tried to rape their 80 year old sister but he could not okay so the very next day he sneaked into another house at that time i think he knew the 12 year old son was hiding in a closet with that in mind he sodomized his mother right in front of him he uh, killed the boy's mother and tie the boy was that dead mother with uh, I think uh, that uh, binding band uh, another case was uh, you know normally when he entered couple's house he killed man first which most of the you know uh, criminals do kill the man first then rape the woman and he liked to oral sex he forced to have oral sex on him and he sodomized her then killed her which was the normal procedure he uh, went through in some cases you know the pentagram right like a reversed star sign for uh, believing in satan he was into satanism so on some body especially on her thigh he sometimes put the pentagram or he drew a pentagram on the wall of the room and interesting thing is he always uh, robbed you know whatever money he could get from the house not only sexual or violent things he also took money too so one time he forced the lady there to swear on satan that there was no more money to give me he did that he forced her to swear on satan in another case uh, one of the victim was uh, keep looking at his eyes and he goes like don't look at me he told the victim not to look at me okay otherwise i will take them out that's what he said at another house he took all the money and forced the Ferracia on the wife and uh, he also sodomized eight year old boy eight year old boy so sexual difference was not that important thing to him more like into distraction this is an interesting part and uh, at another house he tied up three year old boy with a rope and uh, then he moved to his mother and told her during this sex you swear on satan you will not let your voice out i mean you be quiet during i rape you in front of your boy i don't know what kind of meaning it has but what he did and he uh, kept raping mother in front of that three-year-old boy which must have remained in his brain for the rest of his life i believe okay you know uh, he kept uh, doing all those crazy things so it started to become a big news in the area right los angeles area so he moved up to san francisco 
Then he spent a short time up there and came down to Los Angeles again and then took a bus to Arizona where his older brother lived. And as soon as he got off of the bus, he saw his face was on the very front page of the newspaper and the people who were hanging around the bus stop recognized his face because of the newspaper so they kind of followed him and he kept running and running and uh, passing the freeway so many times to trying to rob you know car which came toward him by accident but he failed and in the end i think uh, he got his head you know beat up twice very bad and uh, all those uh, group of people you know ganged up on ramirez and he was arrested in total he killed 13 people five attempted murder 11 rapes and 14 trespassing so that's pretty much what he did in total okay this is what was reported on mr ramirez in public and from now on as part two i would like to tell you mr ramirez that i know because of that mr ramirez was sent to uh, death row of uh, san quentin state prison in california because most of his uh, crimes happened in the Los Angeles area, California. Interesting thing is, uh, I have some other inmate friends with whom I communicate. According to him, Ramirez was always a troublemaker to COs, I mean correctional officers, and always hated by people around him. So he never changed himself as a troublemaker. Do you know this? Some of the serial killers are only interested in female and never write back to uh, male correspondences. Typical example was Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer, and Rodney Alcala. You know, those two never write back to guys but you know it's kind of understandable too not all of them but some of them are only into women and uh i think uh, this uh, uh mr ramirez was one of them too but uh, since my letter was all the way from japan he started to have a little bit interested in uh, communicating with me and it lasted for one year or so but uh, because I'm a guy and you know there's a certain line that, that they you know we cannot go across because we are this on the same sex so he stopped writing back to me so do you know what I did I uh, pretended like I was my wife and wrote a letter again from the same address as before because you know wife and the husband are supposed to live at the same address right and the interesting thing was he wrote me back not knowing that uh, i was writing a letter but uh, the questions are not uh, informative it's like uh you know where where do you first wash when you uh, take shower or uh, when was your first kiss where the who and where and all those uh, you know uh, sexually related questions and i put uh, my interest like uh, how did you feel when you kill the people 
but he never answered those you know uh, questions that try to touch his court he always avoided talking about serious stuff okay and he was always talking about you know uh, how his junior high school days were and so on okay but uh, there were two very interesting episodes he told my wife which is me and one was uh, he and his good buddy were driving jeep in a sand dune right and he was driving very fast at night so probably he could not see uh, what's around him so well but uh, uh, suddenly he came to a stop and he recognized the jeep was so close to the big hall only a couple of centimeters away which is like a one inch away or so that's what he told me and one other episode he told me was one time he was uh, uh, swimming at the Santa Clara Beach in California, right? He was very good at swimming, so he swam so far off of the beach, right? So suddenly this chopper came up, you know, chopper of the uh, Coast Guard. And with this uh, speaker goes, uh, please swim back towards the beach because this is the area filled with the sharks so you know these two episodes you understand what i'm saying right kind of illustrates he was always going after some thrill and excitement and normal level of activities do not give that excitement he had to go you know all the way to feel the excitement that we can feel so this is a good sign of him being a very high level psychopath okay shock and sand dune okay i like to talk a little bit about his childhood mr ramirez's father was an ex-police officer i think he was one in mexico i think and he was very snappy and uh, volatile so kids could not expect when he snaps so everybody was kind of freaked out when daddy was at home and uh, i think uh, richard's older brother was uh, uh, mentally handicapped and uh, he was always abused physically abused by his father so it's more like uh, witnessing his handicapped brother beaten up in front of him than he himself was beaten up but still all those things gave deep scar on uh, richard's mind okay and also his mother used to work at the shoe factory where they used strong glue right and uh, while she was still pregnant with the uh, Ramirez she kept working at the shoe factory and kept smelling that uh, grew you know like uh, thinner or all those you know uh, chemical stuff so that was another bad thing and at age two you know huge closet came down on Richie and uh, he got a scar which needed 30 stitches 
because of that, you know, when uh, his uh, elementary school days started, he could not join, you know, uh, PE. And because he uh, often had epilepsy, unexpectedly had epilepsy because of the accident. And then at the age 10, he started to smoke marijuana. About the same time, his older cousin came back from Vietnam and uh, he was into enjoying violence. So he showed pictures of uh, those violent scenes to, uh, you know, uh, Richard. One of them uh, showed one Vietnamese lady uh, doing, uh, you know, oral sex to his cousin, right? And the next uh, photo, the cousin was carrying the exactly the same girl's head already chopped off and uh, Richard later said she was sexually you know uh, excited looking at the picture okay all these things he often caused the problems in the neighborhood but his mother loved Richard so much so she never took the report by the neighbors so seriously as always protected his son Richard okay this is pretty much the whole information that cover the childhood of uh, Mr. Richard Ramirez so um, in total that uh, volatile and aggressive and abusive ex-cop father you know physically abusing his older handicapped you know or brother so he often left home to sleep at the cemetery where it is much quieter that's the one thing and his mother inhaled so much environmental hormone like grew and thinner and so on at the shoe factory you know for a long enough time when she still had Richard in her stomach that's number two and the huge closet fell down on him scarred his uh, frontal cortex and started to have epilepsies frequently and could not join PE in elementary school and finally he started to smoke marijuana at the age of 10. This sounds like a small thing but smoking marijuana when you are already adult does not have that much effect, negative effect. But when some does that at a very young age, it had strong hallucinatory effects on the person so there was that possibility on Ramirez so you have to be very careful smoking marijuana you know at a very young age it could have heavier negative effects than you know just you smoke marijuana you know older than 20 years old and 30 years old and stuff so you have to be very, very careful about smoking weed when young but all those things right father's sudden anger that environmental hormone at the factory closet came down and uh, scarred his uh, frontal cortex and started to smoke marijuana at the age of 10 these could contribute to having a very shallow emotions which is the sign of psychopathy right so that could be why he only felt excitement when he was so close to danger like on jeep and 
you know, uh, 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 swimming so far where sharks could be, uh, you know, uh, swarming. So, uh, and uh, he could not control himself even at the death row of San Quentin. That is another sign of psychopathy, high psychopathy, because they could keep breaking rules and could not have control over themselves. themselves. So all these uh, backgrounds point to the direction that uh, he could only have very shallow emotion you know as a person and uh, that could be why he did such crazy things you know like raping 80 year old boy after king the family and so on you know all those things are at the pretty much the same abnormal level right but that could be from all those factors that contributed to uh, shallow emotional you know development and uh, i would like to tell you this you hear the word psychopath right but there's very few people who understand the true psychopath you know ordinarily lay people go like uh, when they see somebody too radical oh he is psycho no it's not like that it's more specific you know to tell that person is a psychopath okay but uh, one uh, thing that is commonly pointed out is so psychopath occasionally shows very cold eyes when he is off guard and sometimes said to be similar to uh, cold blooded reptiles this i would like you to know to have correct understanding and uh, i think he knew he is different from other people so you know he only excites at the level no other people can stand so that's why he believed in uh, satanism you know he knew he was abnormal not this is normal abnormal different from others so he needed some kind of uh, mental you know support that he could go on strong which was satanism does that make sense so that's why he occasionally drew a pentagram and at the courthouse he drew pentagram on his palm you know but uh, i think that is an important tool to back up abnormal part of him you know with some kind of external theory and uh, lastly, one uh, interesting thing is, uh, although some of his pictures, you know, he looks so handsome with the sunglasses and, you know, uh, uh, fashionable hairs and whatever, but he was very famous for very smelly mouth because he ate only snacks and he didn't eat decent food. So he had so many decayed you know uh, uh, teeth in his mouth so he was very notorious for you know his uh, mouth being very very smelly that could be part of the reason why he died because of uh, malignant lymphoma lymphoma uh, it was kind of uh, unexpected that he died so young at the age of 53 that's pretty much it and i just uh, would like to let you know uh, briefly the famous you know uh, words that he left okay only some of them he goes i threw away love 
in happiness way back. That's one. Number two, all human beings have evil side, small or big. Number three, I will never believe the hypocrisy that the human moral teaches us. Number four, I have been reported to be highly negative person. Because of that, I will never give you any satisfaction of looking down on me. Number five, everybody has power to kill people. But they just cannot do it because they are too afraid. Only those who do not afraid of using that power to kill other people can control his own life. Sexual desire is the most important source of power that human beings have. And next, you can never understand me because I am way beyond normal people. I have always been interested in death. You know what? To some who uh, rejected giving all the money she had, I removed both of her eyes. When I liked the woman, I sometimes sat right next to her and took picture together. So it all depends on the person. I have always been blamed by you on all kinds of sins that exist. You know, all the murders that the serial killers do are the same thing that the nation are doing at the international level, which means this is the age of blood. And last two, we all are going to die in the end. So don't worry about anything. And lastly, you know, people you call psychopath also have emotions. Or this is it. I apologize for the parts which was not so smooth. But information-wise, I think uh, my minute lecture provided you some that you could never get from other places. So I, I hope uh, this information helped you a little bit to deepen your understanding on Night Stalker, Mr. Richard Ramirez. And until next time, please have wonderful days, okay? And bye-bye now.